The youth who went forth to learn what fear was. Part 1 A certain father had two sons, the elder of whom was smart and sensible, and could do everything, but the younger was stupid and could neither learn nor understand anything, and when people saw him they said, There's a fellow who will give his father some trouble. When anything had to be done, it was always the elder who was forced to do it, but if his father bade him fetch anything when it was late, or in the night time, and by the way led through the churchyard or any other dismal place, he answered, Oh no, father, I'll not go there. It makes me shudder, for he was afraid. But when stories were told by the fire at night which made the flesh creep, the listeners sometimes said, Oh, it makes us shudder. The younger sat in a corner and listened with the rest of them, and could not imagine what they could mean. They are always saying, it makes me shudder, it makes me shudder. Does not make me shudder, thought he. That, too, must be an art of which I understand nothing. Now it came to pass that his father said to him one day, Hearken to me, thou fellow in the corner there. Thou art growing tall and strong, and thou must too learn something by which thou can earn thy living. Look how thy brother works, but thou dost not even earn thy salt. Well, father, replied he, I am quite willing to learn something. Indeed, if it could but be managed, I should quite like to learn how to shudder. I don't understand that at all yet. The elder brother smiled when he heard that, and thought to himself, Good God, what a blockhead that brother of mine is. He will never be good for anything as long as he lives. He who wants to be a sickle must bend himself betimes. The father sighed and answered him, Thou shalt soon learn what it is to shudder, but thou wilt not earn thy bread by that. Soon after, the sexton came to the house on a visit, and the father bewailed his trouble and told him how his younger son was so backwards in every respect that he knew nothing and learnt nothing. Just think, said he, when I asked him how he was going to earn his bread, he actually wanted to learn to shudder. If that will be all, replied the sexton. He can learn that with me. Send him to me, and I will soon polish him. The father was glad to do it, for he thought, it will train the boy a little. The sexton therefore took him into his house, and he had to ring the bell. After a day or two, the sexton awoke him at midnight, and bade him arise and go up into the church tower and ring the bell. Thou shalt soon learn what shuddering is, thought he, and secretly went there before him. And when the boy was at the top of the tower and turned round, and was just going to take hold of the bell rope, he saw a white figure standing on the stairs, opposite the sounding hole. Who is there? cried he, but the figure made no reply, and did not move or stir. Give an answer, cried the boy, or take thyself out, thou hast no business here at night. The sexton, however, remained standing motionless, that the boy might think he was a ghost. The boy cried a second time. What do you want here? Speak if thou art an honest fellow, or I will throw thee down the steps. The sexton thought, he can't intend to be as bad as his words, uttered no sound and stood as if he were made of stone. Then the boy called to him for a third time, and as that was also to no purpose, he ran against him and pushed the ghost down the stairs, so that fell down ten steps and remained lying there in the corner. Thereupon he rang the bell went home, and without saying a word went to bed, and fell asleep. The sexton's wife waited a long time for her husband, but he did not come back. At length she became uneasy, and wakened the boy, and asked, Dost thou not know where my husband is? He climbed up the tower before thou didst. No, I don't know, replied the boy, but someone was standing by the sounding hole on the other side of the steps, and as he would neither give me an answer nor go away, I took him for a scoundrel and threw him downstairs. Just go there and you will see if it was he. I should be sorry if it were. The woman ran away and found her husband, who was lying there moaning in the corner, and had broken his leg. She carried him down, and then with loud screams as she hastened to the boy's father. Your boy, cried she, has been the cause of a great misfortune. He has thrown my husband down the steps and made him break his leg. Take the good-for-nothing fellow away from our house. The father was terrified and ran thither and scolded the boy. What wicked tricks are these? said he. 
The devil must have put this into thy head. Father, he replied, do listen to me. I am quite innocent. He was standing there by night like one who was intending to do some evil. I did not know who it was, but I entreated him three times, either to speak or to go away. Ah, said the father, I have nothing but unhappiness with you. Get out of my sight. I will see thee no more. Yes, father, right willingly. Wait only until it is day. Then I will go forth and learn how to shudder, and then I shall, at any rate, understand one art which will support me. Learn what thou wilt, spake the father. It is all the same to me. Here are fifty thalers for thee. Take these and go into the wide world, and tell no one from whence thou comest, and who is thy father, for I have reason to be ashamed of thee. Yes, father, it shall be as you will. If you desire nothing more than that, I can easily keep it in mind. When day dawned, therefore, and the boy put his fifty thalers into his pocket, and went forth on the great highway, and continually said to himself, If I could but shudder! If I could but shudder! Then a man approached who heard this conversation which the youth was holding with himself, and when they had walked a little further to where they could see the gallows, the man said to him, Look, there is a tree where seven men have married the rope maker's daughter, and are now learning how to fly. Sit down below it and wait till night comes, and you will soon learn how to shudder. If that is all that is wanted, answered the youth, it is easily done, but if I learn how to shudder as fast as that, thou shalt have my fifty thalers. Just come back to me early in the morning. Then the youth went to the gallows and sat down below it and waited till evening came, and as he was cold, he lighted himself a fire, but at midnight the wind blew so sharply that in spite of his fire he could not get warm, and as the wind knocked the hanged men together, and they moved backwards and forwards, he thought to himself, Thou shiverest below by the fire, but how those up above must freeze and suffer. And as he felt pity for them, he raised the ladder, and climbed up, unbound one of them after the other, and brought down all seven. Then he stirred the fire, blew it, and set them all around it to warm themselves. But they sat there and did not stir, and the fire caught their clothes. So he said, Take care, or I will hang you up again. The dead men, however, did not hear, but were quite silent, and let their rags go on burning. On this he grew angry and said, If you will not take care, I cannot help you, and I will not be burnt with you. And he hung them up again, each in his turn. Then he sat down by his fire and fell asleep. And the next morning the man came to him and wanted to have the fifty thalers, and said, Well, dost thou know how to shudder? No, answered he. How was I to know? Those fellows up there did not open their mouths, and they were so stupid that they let the few old rags which they had on their bodies get burnt. Then the man saw that he would not get his fifty thalers that day, and went away saying, One of this kind has never come my way before. The youth likewise went on his way, and once more began to mutter to himself, Ah, if I could but shudder! Ah, if I could but shudder! A wagoner who was striding behind him heard that and asked, Who are you? I don't know, answered the youth. Then the wagoner asked, From whence comest thou? I know not. Who is thy father? That I may not tell thee. What is that art always muttering between thy teeth? Ah, replied the youth, I do so wish I could shudder, but no one can teach me how to do it. Give up thy foolish chatter, said the wagoner. Come, go with me, I will see about a place for thee. The youth went with the wagoner, and in the evening they arrived at an inn where they wished to pass the night. Then at the entrance of the room the youth again said quite loudly, If I could but shudder, if I could but shudder. The host who heard this laughed and said, If that is your desire, there ought to be a good opportunity for you here. Ah, be silent, said the hostess. So many inquisitive persons have already lost their lives. It would be a pity and a shame if such beautiful eyes as these should never see the daylight again. But the youth said, However difficult it may be, I will learn it, and for this purpose indeed I have journeyed forth. He let the host have no rest, until the latter told him that not far from that stood a haunted castle, where any one could very easily learn what shuddering was, if he would but watch in it for three nights. 
The king had promised that he who would venture should have his daughter to wife, and she was a most beautiful maiden the sun shone on. Great treasures likewise lay in the castle, which were guarded by evil spirits, and these treasures would then be freed, and would make a poor man rich enough. Already many men had gone into the castle, but as yet none had come out again. Then the youth went the next morning to the king, and said if he were allowed, he would watch the three knights in the haunted castle. The king looked at him, and as the youth pleased him, he said, Thou mayest ask for three things to take into the castle with thee, but they must be things without life. Then he answered, Then I ask for a fire, a turning lathe, and a cutting board with a knife. The king had these things carried into the castle for him during the day. When night was drawing near, the youth went up and made himself a bright fire in one of the rooms, placed the cutting board and knife beside it, and seated himself by the turning lathe. Ah, if I could but shudder, said he, but I shall not learn it here either. Towards midnight he was about to poke his fire, and as he was blowing it, something cried suddenly from one corner. Ah, oh, meow! How cold we are! You simpletons, cried he, what are you crying about? If you are cold, come and take a seat by the fire and warm yourselves. And when he had said that, two great black cats came with one tremendous sleep and sat down on each side of him and looked savagely at him with their fiery eyes. After a short time, when they had warmed themselves, they said, Comrade, shall we have a game at cards? Why not, he replied, but just show me your paws. They stretched out their claws. Oh, said he, what long nails you have? Wait, I must first cut them for you. Thereupon he seized them by the throats, put them on the cutting board and screwed their feet fast. I have looked at your fingers, said he, and my fancy for card playing is gone. And he struck them dead and threw them out into the water. But when he had made away with these two and was about to sit down again by his fire, out from every hole and corner came black cats and black dogs with red hot chains and more and more of them came until he could no longer stir and they yelled horribly and got on his fire and pulled it to pieces and tried to put it out he watched them for a while quietly but at last when they were going too far he seized his cutting knife and cried away with ye vermin and began to cut them down part of them ran away the others he killed and threw out into the fish pond when he came back he fanned the embers of his fire again and warmed himself and as he thus sat his eyes would keep open no longer, and he felt a desire to sleep. Then he looked round and saw a great bed in the corner. That is the very thing for me, said he, and got into it. When he was just going to shut his eyes, however, the bed began to move of its own accord, and went over the whole castle. That's right, said he, but go faster. Then the bed rolled as if on six horses were harnessed to it, up and down over thresholds and steps, but suddenly hopped. Hop, it turned over upside down and lay on him like a mountain. But he threw the quilts and pillows up into the air, got out and said, Now anyone who likes may drive, and lay down by his fire and slept till it was day. To be continued.